In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create multiple dependent drop-down lists for a thousand rows here in Google Sheets. So this is a continuation of a video that I've made titled Create Multiple Dependent Dropdown Lists. Now in that video, we've only created up to I think the eighth row. But for this one, we're going to do it for a thousand rows. So let's get started. We're going to start first with our first column of dropdown lists. So this is in reference to our sheet right here. We have our reference list. We have our menu. And under those menu, we have these corresponding items. So that's what we are going to be creating with our dependent dropdown lists. If we select this one from our dropdown, these items should come out in the second dropdown option. So let's get started. Now, again, we're going to be creating this for a thousand rows. Let's go ahead and start by selecting our 1000 rows right here. So I'm going to start with A3. Then I'm going to press control shift and arrow down to select those 1000 rows. Now that I've selected them, I'm going to right click, then go to drop down right here. After that, you will see your data validation rules on the right side. And again, we have here the selected range, which we're going to apply this data validation. And the criteria would be instead of a drop down, will be drop down from a range. And we're going to be selecting that range on our reference list right here, which are these ones at the top. We have cookies, cakes, sandwiches, and drinks. Click on OK. If I click on done on the right side, go back to your order form. You will see all those drop downs with those options ready for you to select. So that's for A3. Let's find out if it's the same for A44. It is go to let's say 288 and it will still be the same options. So that's for our first drop down list. Next one would be our second drop down which will contain the items that will correspond to each of these menu right here. So if I select cookies, I want the drop down on this second column to give me the items that correspond to that menu. So if we go back to our reference list right here, the items under the cookies are already laid out right here, ready for us to select for our second drop down list. And at the top right here in our formula bar, you will see the functions that we use, the index and match function, which we transpose the data to have it sideways because we are going to be dragging this formula all the way down right here. So we have here the different type of cookies in response to the selection that we selected right here in our menu, which is cookies. So now if we create our second drop down list, in the previous video, what we did was to again add a rule. Our criteria would be the same drop down from a range. Select that range from our reference list, which would be this one right here. So let me just move that so you can see everything that I'm selecting. There we go. Click on OK. There we have the selections. Click on done. And again, if we go back to our order form, now, if we click on this drop down, we have those items corresponding to our selected menu on the first drop down list. So butter cookies for our cookies. If we change this to cake, you'll have that warning telling you that it's invalid because this time we have a new selection that you can choose from. And there you have it. Now, in the previous video, I've mentioned that we can't really just drag it down like so, because if we do, you'll see that it will give us the same selection. Even if I select cookies right here, the second drop down list will not give me the corresponding items for that selection. The same thing for the third one. If I say drinks, it will not give me the drinks because in our data validation for that range, we have an absolute reference for our criteria. So all these drop downs are referencing to the first one right here. So if we go back to our order form, we have cookies on the second drop down and on our reference list, it has the correct items. But because this cell reference that we've selected is an absolute reference, 
all the drop downs that we've created on our second drop down list will refer to that very first one. So what we're going to do to fix this would be to remove the absolute reference or these dollar signs right here on our cell reference. There we go. If we click on done, there we have it. This time we have those warnings saying it's invalid because the selections are now new and the menu is also different. So for cookies, now we have the correct items or the right selection for the cookies. There we go for the drinks. We also have the right items or the right selection for that menu. And for this ones, because we don't have anything selected, they are also giving you the invalid message. So now we have fixed that error. So we can just drag this all the way down. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is to change the range that it's applied to. I'm going to make that to 1002. Click on done. There we go. Now we have the drop down all the way down to our 1000 row. And for this to really work, we also have to do the same thing with our reference list. Remember, our formula only exists up to this row right here. If I click on F11, there's no more formula. If I go to my order form and select F11 right here, if I select cookies, it will not give me any selection because in our reference list, we haven't dragged that formula down up to that row. If I do, you'll see that we have that menu now. And if we go back to our order form and select that, it will give us the corresponding selection for that menu. And there you have it. So let me just delete that. There we go. So again, we're going to do the same thing and drag this same formula all the way down to our 1000 row. There you have it. So if I click on this, you'll see that that formula is already inside that cell. If I go back to our order form and try and select something from the bottom, let's say 990, if I select cookies right here, it will give me the correct selection corresponding to that menu. If I select 997, go to cake, it will give me the selections for cake. And there you have it. So if you are trying to create multiple dependent dropdown lists for at least a thousand rows, this is how you can do it. And there you have it. That's how to create multiple dependent dropdown lists for a thousand rows here in Google Sheets. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, do leave a like and subscribe for more helpful videos. See you on the next one.